One of the things that uh, I think everybody knows about Sergio is, is that from the time he gets here until the time he leaves, he has a throne that he sits on right outside you know, the uh, porter, porter's area. And he, uh, he says hello to everybody all day long. He gets involved in people's lives. Uh, he always has a word of advice, word of good counsel. And uh, he is probably uh, one of the greatest uh, sense of humor uh, men we've ever had in this campus. Where did I grow up? I grew up uh, in uh, Poggibonzi, that is a town between Siena and Florence. Now it's a town of about 30,000 people, but when uh, I was growing up in Poggibonzi, it was a real small place after the war, after the Second World War. So it was mostly ruins. The, the, the railroad had been bombed, many of the bridges over the two rivers were bombed during the war by the Americans. So they are lies, let us put it that way. And so Poggibonzi was rebuilt in that period, and we grew up uh, in, in Tuscany after the Second World War. When I was oh, kids, we were playing with, with the bombs. Do you know those bombs that look like pines? Like a pine, you know. Oh, yeah, that's right. And we were playing with that. One time I had one in my hand. That's interesting. We were playing. I take that. Oh, say, oh, this is bad. We are to throw away. Okay, so throw away. Then there was a little bomb after the war, during the war actually. There was a little bomb, and I pressed the button, and it was exploded there. You see the luck. If I had not thrown away that little bomb, I would be all either dead or. Who knows what? I was lucky. So I, re I remember very much, for example, the American soldiers, the American army. They were good to me. They were giving us that bread, the white bread that we hate in America now, right? I'm talking about the regular white bre wow. bread. Yeah. And with the butter, jelly, all that stuff. And, and that, uh, that meat that you people spam, what is the name? that you people hate, we love so much. And all the soldiers were looking at us, little children, like their own children, you know. So they were inviting us, they come on, eat, eat, you know. Well, we didn't speak English, of course. But they were offering us sweets and any kind of food. So we were well off in that sense, thanks to the American army that, you know, was based there in Tuscany. Well, I think it was about five years ago that I first met him uh, because he always comes and teaches here in the summertime. So there's always a, a change in, in uh, the tempo, a change in the volume, uh, also in change of quality of life. So when Sergio is around, so uh, that's how I got to know Sergio. Yeah, Sergio has this, this um, kind of uh, magical personality. It's also, it's also because of his having spent um, his life half in um, Italy and being having a kind of a pure period of 35 years where he was, you know, we grew up in Italy, um, and now having the second half of his life, starting in you know in the 70s as you've you know ascertained, and then uh, becoming American, and even having to become American the way immigrants do fast by joining a family, but having a uh, you know his son being um, you know raised as an American without even learning Italian. So um, when he started coming back here in the 1990s, it's always. Um, in a way, a kind of return to who he was before he came to America. And it's just sort of, uh, he's just sort of uh, magical as a kind of a cultural informant. I think that my first impression of him was, what a typical Italian man. <laughs> uh, he loves to put his arm around, you know, friends and um, make people feel comfortable. But then once you get past that, what a typical Italian man, in a good, in a very positive sense, He's a very profound thinker, and he is very passionate about his job, and there's so much more that meets the eye with Sergio. Many people, many... Oh, you are already doing that? <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> but we have to be informal like this, or you want me to, to tell you the, the most grandiose things in the world? The That's okay, don't worry. <laughs> this is our new class. <laughs> <laughs> If you want, I can tell you some jokes, you know, <laughs> morning, but I will refrain from that because 
Today will be hell. I promise, I promise to you, it's going to be it's the best hell. philosophy for teaching that you can, you know, to make students comfortable and to make them appreciate the subject. You try at least. My father died all of a sudden. Actually, I was in bed with him in the morning playing with my dad and all of a sudden he died. They never established the real reason for his death, probably an heart attack or, you know, some problem, aneurysm. And uh, he was 29, so I grew up with my mother. She was a widow and um, I never had siblings, of course. And I brought my mother, who reasonably could not stay there because she didn't speak any English. So poor lady, she said, you know, can I do? I took her on top of the Janenka Center Sunday morning for brunch with my family. So I say from the 95th floor, see, mom, look around. Isn't that gorgeous? Look, you can see different states. You know, it was all lumin luminous, you know, bright, beautiful. She looked like this. Yeah. Yes, yes, but Pojibonsi is better. So <laughs> she wanted to come back to Poggibonzi, of course. Why? She knew in Poggibonzi all the people. Ciao, come stai? Buongiorno. Eh, guarda chi c'è. Hugging, you know. Eh. That's too bad, but we don't have in America, guys. We don't have that. I've heard he has the highest rating of, uh, from all the students of any faculty member who taught her. Yeah. I would have to say that uh, Sergio is a perfectionist. And he always wants things to come out absolutely on time. He wants everybody on time. He wants everything to go right. Nothing goes right here. I mean, Sergio is an Italian, and Sergio somehow thinks like an American. He wants everything to be absolutely on time. So uh, he uh, always goes up to these various towns and villages and takes a whole group of students, usually with Wiley, his compañero. So he gets up, uh, he gets up to uh, these villages and towns, and of course, you know, he thinks that everything is going to go along just the way it does. You know, when you're taking a group of people over to, uh, you know, some place near Chicago. But uh, the fact is, is that, you know, lunch isn't on time, buses aren't on time, students aren't on time, and so Sergio goes crazy. Uh, and so he says, uh, he comes back, he says, Wiley, we got to change this whole thing. This whole thing is upside down. Uh, everybody goes out and says, Sergio, you're in Italy. You know, no, this is not Chicago. And he says, oh, I forgot, I keep forgetting. <laughs> so he's, he's, always, uh, he's always a good sport about everything, but he's always looking for perfection. I came here the, for the first time in 1984. Then from 1990, Feinstein and I started the program here, and, but the program was the Modern Language Department, our own program. We had the budget. We would decide how to spend our money. We would take our students to different places like Florence too, besides Siena, you know, Assisi, Pompeii. We started this monkey business. But we had our own budget, deciding to have celebrations at Rinaldo's, for example. People had dance, dances, you know, the different ways of entertaining. And we started in 1990, myself and uh, Wiley Feinstein. And throughout the years, we always honored this program and we like so much that we always, you know, we are having a good number of students and we really like this reunion somehow, some way in the summer for five weeks. He's a great, he's a great friend. He always, he's always giving me a lot of support. I've, I've, tried, I've, tried, I've tried to always support him too, you know, because sometimes, um, um, like if he can't be here, if he goes back to Poti Bonte, I always try to, you know, always make sure that uh, I can cover for him. But he's always been extremely supportive, though. He's a very, he's very, been very loyal that way. I definitely think he applies it to his teaching. Uh, he's, uh, he loves to teach for one thing, huh? And so when he gets in the classroom, he just, uh, he shines. That's where, that's his stage. You know, and, uh, you can see that, can't you? I mean, uh, just from taking classes with him, you can see that th this man wants to be able to give you the best shot he's got. He wants you to have something at the end of the summer you have never had before. And on the way, he makes you laugh. I know, so you get a good sense of the man. My main task is that, uh, to be with students and colleagues and to have a good time, to share laughter. You know how many times we laugh. You know that. We are always joking, say something that is supposed to be funny. 
some people could say it's stupid, some people left, but at least there is this sense of companionship and camaraderie that sometimes in Chicago you don't have. I think you students feel the same way, that here you are closer to your friends. Am I right? In Chicago, after the class, what do you do? You go home or you have your job and somebody else has, oh, ciao, I see, okay, bye, see you later. Yeah. So the point is, you know, that as long as you feel like teaching, as long as, uh, thank God, your health is still okay, you know, because a few, six years ago, eight years ago, I can say that, I had the quadruple bypass. But my heart is in perfect condition, at least until now. So, and my strength is still here. And my memory or my judgment is still here. Until, I tell you, I'll, I, will, I will retire just when I will feel uh, uneasy in class or not up to the task. Then I will quit. You know, uh, one of the things in Rome, you know, because here I am, I, I've only been here for five years, and yet I'm Todd and I and Marilyn and uh, Elise, who are, there's only a few of us who have been here, uh, you know, on faculty and staff, more than five years, more than ten years. We've got people like Fausto who have been here for a lifetime. But the historical memory of the place in terms of faculty, you know, there, there's not too many people who have been coming here as long as Sergio. Professor John Nicholson, He's, had his 40, he's got his 40th year here. Sergio, I think, is 32. So, you know, he has part of the historical memory of the Rome Center, and he can tell you stories from long ago. So I think that's a tremendous value for all of us. When you will be older, hey, it comes for everybody. I have students who are grandfathers too now. Children, oh, children went through college, you know, but 36 years. And yet sometimes they write and they say, oh, I had a great time, I remember the time in Rome. Because this is a unique experience for you too. And who knows, even if you are young, if you will have a chance to duplicate this. Am I right? To come back to a place like Rome. I don't know. Maybe you don't. Because you have a job, you have the requirement of a graduation, am I right? So you will treasure always your memories here in Italy, in Rome, and in Italy. The trips you made, the friends that you, you, some new friendships, for example. You will remember that throughout your years. If I could sum up Sergio Corsi in one word or two, it would be Antonio Bandaras. If I had one word, I'd have to use two words. Yeah. I would say he, I'd say he has a phenomenal sense of humor. Irrepressible. He makes me laugh. He's a total babe. Irreverent. Genius. He's always, he's always been like sort of the life of the Rome Center or summer program. Goodbye, Si ritrova a pranzo a squarciarelli, fettuccine e vino dei castelli, come ai tempi belli che pinelli, immortalò. Arrivederci Roma, goodbye.